Welcome back, everybody, to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. It is late March of 1863. We're ready to make our final push to try and win this thing. And uh, with that in mind, what I think we are going to start doing is we're going to start looking at, while we continue our push uh, through the south, I'm thinking about some amphibious operations. We've got a massive advantage in terms of our Navy. So I'm thinking about Wilmington, North Carolina, and then specifically New Orleans, which is seven times larger than the next largest Confederate city. Uh, they are larger than the next four Confederate cities' populations combined. That's how big and how important New Orleans is. So with that in mind, we're going to form a new army in New York. And this is going to be, we're not going to name it the Army of New York. We'll come up with a better name than that. We're also going to look for a different general other than Graham Fitch to get this done. I don't know who we want. How about Oliver Howard? Eh, maybe not. I want somebody really, really good for this role. Not Henry Hunt either. How about George Meade? Not a lot of fame, but that's okay. We're going to put this uh, army together under George Meade. And this is going to be the Army of North Carolina. And we're going to put together a force that's going to land at Wilmington, take that port. Uh, and then from there, we will probably launch an effort to take some of the other port cities and eventually New Orleans. Next, what we'll do is we're going to send Farragut Squadron north. They've got seven ships. I don't know what kind of ability they have to carry troops. There's got to be some way to find that out. Glorious victory at Waynesboro Bridge. So that siege has been lifted with the Confederates unable to break the 5th Corps. Finally going to be able to move, I think, the 12th Corps. We'll have to transfer a division back to the 12th Corps that we took from that Corps to put in the 5th Corps to help hold there. But Farragut Squadron is going to be tasked with carrying Meade's army, which uh, is going to be around 20,000 men when it's all said and done. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Army of North Carolina is going to have two cavalry brigades attached as well as two divisions that will each have uh, three infantry brigades and some artillery. We do have some really good artillery available to us. While we don't have a lot in the way of infantry weapons available at the moment, we're still just looking at Springfield muskets and reboard muskets for the most part. We do have some good artillery available. Confederates are making some pushes up into the north. I'm not entirely sure why, because they can't possibly get supplied that way. Um, we got Walker's army right here. Army of the Shenandoah, Western Army. We got the Army of the Tennessee. These are a lot of headquarters mostly, but uh, we are going to move the First Corps down here, grab these supplies. I still need to actually grab Nashville itself. Uh, so we're going to move the Army of the Tennessee as much as possible across to take Nashville and we'll just try to cut off the supplies as best we can let's get the Army of the West over here to Cairo Hooker's still kind of stuck right now oh we got some troops being ferried up river and somehow they got past my Mississippi squadron so we'll send that up here to deal with that. And we're just going to sit tight with Hooker in Memphis. He's taking a lot of casualties right now. I don't know why, because he's got supply there. Okay, so our Mississippi squadron is engaging the fleet that's carrying Hector's Corps. Be interested to see how that all shakes out. Seems like it's going to go on for a while. Army of the West is just about into Cairo. McClellan's army is here. It looks like they're encamped. They are supplied. Let's see if we can come over here and hit the Army of Tennessee. How many men do they have? It's just a headquarters. I don't know if they actually have men there or not. We've grabbed Nashville and everything around it. Uh, 
Well, while we're thinking about it, we do have a new uh, Major General level patron. Thank you, Shadow Trooper, for your support. And he has requested an upgrade from his previous single brigade, which was the Evergreen Brigade, to an entire division, which he is eligible for. And that's going to be the Western Division under Tyler in the Army of the Ohio, which is Hooker's Army, down there in Memphis. Uh, so we've added... he gave me the option on naming the new brigade just as long as they have the similar color uniform so they do so i went with the names uh from the uh, commanders loomis's rifles or the loomis rifles uh, for this illinois unit that'll be joining in 19 days uh, we've got wards wanderers for jh hobart wards artillery battalion of 10 pounder parrots and then shadow trooper i just chose this one for you these ohio boys are the shadow troopers now we don't have any decent weapons to give them right now but uh, actually if we can at least go to reboard muskets that'll give them the 400 yard range which is better than what they currently have we got lawrence is here we got sharps rifles here which uh, are breech loading so they fire fast uh, but that means you run out of ammunition a little faster too so let's see what happens Okay, and our other uh, patron division that we've got recruited now, uh, the Sexy Division, will be showing up here as soon as possible in the Army of the West where we desperately need some more troops. Uh, so that's going to be Gonzo's Gators right here, 20 days coming from Indiana. Uh, Task Force Troy, 16 days uh, coming from Indiana. Is both Indiana? No, they're Illinois. Okay. Uh, Virginia Legion with their Sharps carbines are going to be coming from Iowa in 24 days. And then the first battery, uh, which is uh, Holly's Hurricanes, 20-pounder parrots coming from Illinois, 23 days. So in about three weeks, we should have all of those units in the Army. Okay, Joe Hooker's Army is being attacked again in Memphis. This seems to be where the action is right now. Uh, about 28,000 Confederates. Let's see what we can do. Okay, as we go into the Battle of Memphis, our morale is super low right now, uh, especially Buell's division. Uh, they're pretty nervous, but I'm hoping that as time goes on, that morale situation will improve, especially if we don't enter action right away. So I'm going to send one division up this way. Uh, we're going to send the majority of our force up here, and I'm going to send some cavalry along with some artillery way out here this way, and then they're going to come in down Coleman's Ridge this way. Confederates could be anywhere in this area right here. I would get, I'm gonna guess they're probably right in here because it looks like they may be digging in right there at Bishop's Ridge, but I'm not 100% sure. Hector arrived, so he's just received his reinforcements. We kind of expected that to be happening. They're probably coming in from one of these two spots. So we don't want to hit these guys straight on, but there's a swamp on this side. So coming from over here in the trees is probably our best bet. So maybe not with Buell's division. Maybe with one of the others. We'll lead that attack. Let's bring him up, I don't know, right here for now. Huntington's division will bring right up to this objective point here with Buell in behind. We still have another division down here too, Robinson. We'll send him up right here. These woods make it pretty tricky. It's kind of like a uh, Chickamauga type situation where you just really don't know. Now we've got a chance to redeploy. All right, let's send out some skirmishers. See if we can get any sense of what might be in front of us there. The Western Division just has the one brigade right now. We're grabbing a few objectives. We're going to bring in these divisions over here, and this is probably going to how, be how we make our attack. I'm going to move Huntington up. We're going to keep him in two lines. Now we're going to bring in Munch to his right. We could actually hold our position here at this point. All right, we've spotted our first Rebel Brigade. I think we can move the Yellow Riders up in front of the cavalry, get them in range to start shelling that position. 
Let's try to do the same with uh, any other artillery that we might have in the area. I don't know if we have a lot over here. Now we do have the first battery here. Let's see if we can get them up in a clearing somewhere to fire as well. We're just about ready to start moving over here on this side. That's the only brigade we're seeing so far though. So either the rest, yeah, the rest are in behind him. Okay. There's no point in attacking, assaulting that position directly, though. He's got breastworks. So we'll use the artillery, and then we'll come at him from the side. Because he doesn't have that extended this way. All right, Yellow Rider should be able to start hitting him now. Why are we not firing? Sometimes just a matter of shifting their position a tiny bit. Here comes his artillery. All right, skirmishers are engaged. for a little while. How's the morale looking? Still the same. His morale's so high. All right, he's actually got men going out this way. Thankfully, we've got Cab out on that flank. We'll go out there and protect that side with at least one brigade of cavalry. Why the yellow riders are not firing. How about a bombard order? Drop it right on them. Did I do that right? I think I did. Same here. Bombardment order. Right there. Bosses Rangers moving in, they've got a perk available. Let's give them deadly volley. Now Smoky Mountain Brigade's ready to level up too. I'm gonna give them sharpshooters. I like to have a variety of things. So somebody's always leveling up no matter the situation. Alright, he's moving guns in right over here. And that's a mistake that we're gonna make him pay for. We'll send the 4th Brigade out there for that. Let's also shift these guys over. I really want to charge these guns. Yeah, charge them. Drive that battery out of there before they can get set up. Oh, he's got a whole division moving in on me over here. Let's try to pin him in the swamp. Okay, we're going to switch here to counter battery fire. Let's light up this battery that just set up over here. Alright, we took care of that battery. He made that mistake of moving in over there. Now let's pull back. Oh, why are you moving over there? I didn't tell you to move there. Oh, I was, ah, I was controlling the wrong unit, I think. Stop. You're moving right in front of a unit. Just got to keep an eye on these guys over here. Morale's gone down a little bit, but so is his. I may have just left those guns for him to pick up. What's going on over here? Get back. And now they broke because of it. Oh, I hate when that happens. Now, 
these guys apparently can't hit those guns, so we're going to just give them fire at will orders. What's the situation so far? Pretty even. Casualties. But we've taken out 20 of his guns. Otherwise, we're pretty solid. These guys are supposed to be moving over here. And then I'll bring this brigade up here to just protect those guns, just in case. Right. Send out some skirmishers. All right, I feel pretty good. Everything's kind of the way I'd like it to be. I feel like we're in pretty good shape. I was expecting I'd be able to attack him, but he kind of got aggressive on me. I really like these guys being stuck in the swamp over here. I'm going to shift the Kaskaskia rifles over this way a little bit more. I'm a little bit concerned about how heavy he's moving on my left. But I think we'll be okay. Move right up to the edge of this swamp. And we'll catch him with fire from two brigades as the Texas State Militia come in. I'm going to switch the Yellow Riders back to uh, fire at will now. The thing aligns detachments low on ammunition, not a problem. I'll just pull those skirmishers back in. light this guy up. Feeling pretty good about things right now. And we'll see what happens. As long as everybody holds. Yeah, now the numbers are starting to look good. As long as we can just sit tight. Gotta watch that morale, see if we can keep it from going any lower because it's pretty darn low right now. Everything's just kind of at a standstill. I'm honestly gonna keep this center right where it is. This worries me a little bit, having all this artillery with no infantry support. But I think we're okay. Yeah, in fact, you see the Yellow Riders just broke that brigade. That was beautiful. And what I'll do here is I'm going to actually shift. No, I don't want to do it like that. I want to shift him back here. And then from there, over here. Better yet, we're going to send the Kaskaskia rifles over here. I want to protect these batteries. Two batteries firing on him. He's going to get lit up. Actually, it's not two batteries. It's two artillery battalions. we got 15 guns here. 22 guns here. That's 37 guns firing on one brigade. I think we're going to be fine. 
Alright, he's doing some kind of major shifting now. Numbers look good. Two to one casualties. Alright, he's pulling them back now. So now we can go ahead and shift these guys. Alright, Kaskaskia Rifles. Iron Discipline. You can see that's leveling up. Anytime they're in range combat, it levels up. I cannot believe these guys are surviving under the fire that they're taking from artillery right now. Now we just got to hold on the right. Yeah, those orders are coming all the way from Hooker, which is pretty difficult right now since they're all the way on that side. Man, because Cascade Rifles are taking a lot of casualties too, though. They're taking 700. Texas State Militia can't possibly last under the fire they're taking. Get this help over there as quickly as we can. Now the hooker's closer, we should be able to get those orders through. All right, they're coming in at my right now. Don't know why he wants to. It wants to make the blitzers go at that angle. I don't want that at all. I've got two brigades in reserve on this side. So Smoky Mountain Brigade breaks for some reason. Our bosses rangers do. We have plenty of help. We've also got this battery right there. Three inch ordnance. These guys are gonna get lit up and broken. There they go. How are we doing? Kaskaskia Rifles, almost a thousand casualties. Boy, they are taking some heavy losses over here on the left. I've got to get this cavalry over here to support them. We're just waiting for Hooker to get the orders through. Man, they are holding something fierce, but that Texas State Militia is doing a number on them. But they're, they're about to hit 50%, so they're going to break soon. Here comes the cavalry. Literally. There we go. We broke him. Nice job, boys. About to hit Iron Discipline 2. Right, let's pull in Robinson Skirmishers. End of the day. Woo. There's a an end of day that we needed because uh, things were getting a little rough there. Uh, now we're going to have to redeploy a little bit. Okay, here we go with day three. I've extended everybody into a single line formation now, with the exception of the Evergreen Brigade, which is uh, the only brigade in its division right now. The others haven't arrived. So we're gonna hold them as our lone reserve. Kaskaskia rifles are in pretty rough shape, so I am a little concerned about them, but they're all the way out on the left with lots of artillery support. So I feel like they'll be okay. They're next to two brigades who haven't taken any casualties. We're good there. I don't think any other units have suffered too heavily. Lions lost 535 men. They're about to get their perk. I think we're just going to hold the line. I feel like we're in pretty good shape to do that. Their Jackson broke. It's still shown as a minor defeat, but that's going to change soon. He's lost 21% of his men. His morale still super high, though, which is the main reason why he's not falling back. Here comes what I think is probably a pretty futile attack on the right side. why their formations are 
function is so weird. There we go. Now we got it fixed. We're gonna have three brigades firing on this guy. There goes Anderson. I think we got this. Day three is gonna end pretty quickly. Let's pull skirmishers back in. Make him send his main line at me. that battery. They just must have been taking a lot of fire from the Louisiana State Militia. That's alright though. There's not much left of the Confederate Army at this point. So we're going to hurl him back from Memphis with heavy casualties. Now let's go deal with this artillery. Mount up the cavalry. Send them in. I'm going to send the blitzers in with them. We're going to charge those guns. Oh, they broke. Darn it. That's all right. Send the infantry in. There, we broke one of the batteries. Now let's do the same with the other. Got them. Beautiful. That's right, Blitzers, you did your job. Wiped out two batteries. And that's his remaining artillery. And there's another unit broke. I think they're done. Awesome. That was a nice victory. It started out a little disjointed. But once we got things into position, it worked out pretty good. Okay, we lost 4,500 men and 17 guns. But we took out 85 guns and 14,000 men. That's a devastating loss for the Confederates in a place where they're trying to isolate and destroy Hooker's army. And we've got a lot of reinforcements coming. I think now, once Meade's army is ready to go in New York and we can make that move on Wilmington, we can start thinking about the beginning of the end being this summer. Okay, we uh, can now also choose legal blockade which uh, I'm surprised we didn't do sooner, but we're going to go ahead and do it now. We got Diplomacy 2, uh, which allows further subsidies and I think should allow for some new weapons. It's just going to take a little bit of time for that to happen. We just don't have any other weapons available right now. Meade's army is coming down from Albany, which is where it first formed. Once we get it down here to Newark, New Jersey, I think we ought to be able to load it on to Farragut's squadron. All right, let's take a look at the situation here. We've got the Army of the West now down uh, and moving into western Tennessee. We've got the Army of the Tennessee here as well. We're probably in a position now where we can perhaps... Uh, we can't move Harney yet. I'd like to try and reconnect with Hooker since he's doing everything he can to surround Hooker's army down here. Uh, so let's start moving forward. With the Army of Tennessee, I'm going to move Grant's headquarters down a little bit too. All right, they're coming after Hooker again. That's not the same army I just fought, is it? I'm not sure if it is or not. We're going to deploy to defend and just kind of hold out until we can send some reinforcements to help him. So I'm going to send John Gibbon with the 17th Corps all the way down there. We're going to be right behind with Governor Warren. Supply capacity is not good in New York. There's not enough to supply Meade's army. So we've got to upgrade the supply depot that's there. Which is actually just one right now that can only supply about 6,000 men. Got a lot of manufacturers there. So we'll upgrade that. We'll 
have to start building a new one. Actually, I can't even do that right now because Meade's army is so low on readiness. So it's going to be a while before he's ready to move. I think everything's still pretty solid in Virginia. So we're trying to get down here to help out in Memphis. What is the situation here? I'm going to get Gibbon there as quick as possible. Gibbon's a southern man. He's from North Carolina. Several of his brothers fought for the South. It's kind of a strange thing. You have Northerners who fought for the South, Southerners who fought for the North. John Pemberton that defended um, Vicksburg was from Pennsylvania. Uh, William Clark Cl uh, Quantrill, who is uh, you know, known for his Quantrill's Raiders, uh, was from Northeast Ohio. He's from Dover. He's actually buried there. Well, part of him is buried there. A lot of others as well. George Thomas was from Virginia. All right, there's a lot going on down here right now. But the important thing is we've got this core here to help out. I think that'll be enough to keep them from being able to take Memphis. Okay, we completed legal blockade. That's going to once again uh, kind of help us out financially also hurt the confederacy uh, what else can we do right now we've got bounties i don't think that's necessary emancipation is going to embolden the south that would increase their morale by five that's not what we want to do right now uh, we're the only reason really to do that right now would be to increase our own support and also to um, reduce european intervention neither of which is an issue right now how about Revenue Act 2? Let's get some more money. Got to keep an eye on that credit rating. Army of North Carolina, once we get their readiness up into yellow, we'll be able to make that move. It's going to be a little while before that happens, but he does have his full force now. Uh, we now 437,000 men in the field to his 410,000, so still the numbers are super even, which I don't like at all. Uh, how's McClellan doing here? All right, narrow victory in Memphis, so we did drive them back. Yeah, looks like the Confederates are clearing out of Memphis now. How's the Army of the West doing? I think we're good there, too. I don't know what's going on with these Western armies. I'm not, not going to worry about it a whole lot. I am going to hold the Army of the West back up in Cairo, though. 18th Corps is down here. Let's, let's go grab Corinth. And then we'll come up and grab this supply depot. We'll kind of seal things off in western Tennessee as best we can. Confederate recruits offered bounties. That's interesting. All right. McClellan's army is in pretty good shape. They're low on food, which I don't fully understand because it looks like we've got enough. Uh, no, we don't have enough supply depots here. We've only got enough for 19,000 men right now. Let's build a second one. All right, how's Meade doing? Is he ready to go yet? Not quite. It's going to be a little while, I think, till he gets there. 31 days. Okay, we're about to take Corinth. There's nobody there, so it's just a matter of kind of taking things over. And the problem here, of course, is supply. We're also going to take the telegraph station, but there is supply down here. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Oh, what's going on here? All right, so we've got 70,000 men. The Army of Georgia and Ramsar's Corps, uh, they're going to take us on in uh, Virginia. The 2nd Corps, the Army of the Potomac, plus the 5th Corps, Army of the Potomac. Big battle. This might be the biggest battle we've fought so far. Okay, so I was in the process of moving my army into a position right along here. Uh, we're in the New Market Battlefield in Shenandoah Valley, but he's all bunched up up here, and he's got my uh, army outnumbered significantly, but he's going to move in and attack me right here, all the way on my right flank, even before daylight. It's 4.15 in the morning. We've got cavalry in position there, but not much else. So uh, we're going to bring up the Gettysburg Guards. 
and they're going to be the first ones to get into position to start engaging this artillery as quickly as we possibly can. The rest of that division's up not far behind. But hopefully we can bunch him up on this road. It looks like he's pulling back now. They're out of range for my cavalry. All right, looks like the rest of the units are moving now. All right, Gerard, get into place quickly. Where'd the cav go? Did they break already? They did. Jeez. They lost 62 men, never fired a shot, and now I kind of wish that I had left the Gettysburg Guards where they were. Although I'd be very happy if they'd just turn around to start. So we'll get some artillery into position. Let's move these guys over there. Man, he's putting in his whole army right there. Morale's a bit of an issue. We might break before this thing even gets started at this rate. Oh, man. That battery is just ripping holes in my line like you wouldn't believe. We're going to get overwhelmed on this right flank before I can even do anything. Oh, boy. This might be a real quick battle. Yeah, he, he sees the advantage he's got, and he's taking advantage of it quickly. Jeez, we don't have a prayer here. We should have fallen back further to a better spot in the line. Turn around, guys. What are you doing? Daniel Cameron's getting for bayonets. We've got 24 pounders here. I'm hoping that will drive these guys off. Boy. Guys, hold, hold. No, it's not happening. Rally, come on, try and rally these guys. Stone's got it rough over here. don't have enough men even under the best of situations. He's got 54,000 men to my 39,000. We're inflicting casualties. Ah, we just can't hold. This might be a situation where it's best to just withdraw now before it gets worse. I think we will. Okay, so Minimal casualties could have been a lot worse. We're not going to give it the chance to get a lot worse. We've got a lot of men in Virginia. We'll just have to retake Stanton at some point later on. It's May 22nd, 1863. We've got some big things happening right now in the campaign. Our national morale drops by half a point. We can afford to sacrifice national morale because his is so darn close to being at the breaking point. Okay, let's give Meade his movement orders. We're going to land them over here near Fort Macon and then march down from there once we've established a base of supply and we'll take Wilmington that way. Let's make sure this is happening. All right, his readiness is going down, which 
seems to me like that means things are going to happen here. Looks like he's going to come down here maybe to Tom's River and load up there. Assuming we have the sea transport capacity, we do. I guess we don't actually need a squadron to do that. It just happens kind of on its own. So we're going to send Farragut squadron back down here. I think Farragut's another Virginian. He's from the south somewhere. Army of the Ohio and the 17th Corps are going to have another battle, this time against 20,000 men. I'm going to auto-resolve that one. I feel like we'll be okay there. Glorious victory at Memphis. Once again, the Confederates getting crushed by Hooker. Fighting Joe Hooker. His national morale sits at 32%. All right, we're going to send McClellan over here to hit Price's Corps, who's trying to build a supply base in uh, southern Kentucky. We're still holding Nashville. I don't think that's going to be a concern moving forward. I'm kind of tempted to send the 1st Corps down here, 30,000 men strong, to take Chattanooga. We might draw his attention a little bit that way. I think those two corps are going to be enough to deal with Memphis. All right, looks like we dealt with the Confederates there. Let's move uh, the Second Corps back down the Shenandoah Valley and retake this supply depot right here. Let's see what's happening with Meade. He's sitting. Oh, he's going. I think he's loading up. Third Corps, 32,000 men. Effectives, going to take on Hudson's Corps. Uh, where's that at? No, we, we can't fight defensively. We have to actually fight this one. Let's do it. Okay, so here's the situation. We are on the uh, Gaines Mill, Mechanicsville, slash Cold Harbor Battlefield, where all the Richmond battles seem to get fought. Uh, he's starting all the way in the back on the other side of the Chickahominy River. We've got a lot of room out in front of us to maneuver and get into position before we have to face him. Um, so we're going to move, I think right up into this area here into defensive positions I think that's where we can probably expect him to hit us and we'll send some cavalry out on the flanks but none of the objectives are over here they're all over in here for this fight so that's where we can probably expect to run into him Okay, here they come, right down the road, as expected. I'm actually going to bring Brooks up and over here. I want to grab that objective, but I also want to be able to get out on that flank a little bit. I'd like to shift these guys over a hair if I can. I'll bring Chamberlain over here into that spot. We've got some cavalry way out here on the flanks just grabbing some objective points that's all the objective points actually so we can go ahead and bring the cav up now way out here on the extreme left wing and I would expect we're gonna see him come right down this road and dig in hopefully we can get those couple of adjustments made real quick so Welsh is gonna move in there Chamberlain's gonna come into where Welsh was the rest are gonna move in up on this side Where's my division commander? Oh, he's over here. All right, let's send out some skirmishers. Force this battery into position. Hopefully we can start hitting him. 14 pounder James is here. All right, well, she send out some skirmishers too. Oh, he's coming down this road too. Look at that. Okay, that's gonna get interesting because we just started shifting. up here right, let's hold the battery no 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 not the whole division just this battery let's hold them back we got the cav coming up I'm gonna move the cav even further this way hold the other one in reserve
mixed muskets. Not the best weapons for the job, but it's what we have right now. Pretty even numbers. His morale significantly higher than mine, though. For some reason we can't fire from here. We gotta find a find a spot from which we can fire those guns. First, first fighting for this division. And we've got them out on that flank, too. Right, let's try to deal with this artillery. I don't like having them sit there firing away at us like that. Send some skirmishers out a little closer. Good, we're inflicting some casualties on them, but they got 18 guns. It's a pretty strong unit there. guys dismounted. I'm going to send, send some more cab up there. Now he may be shifting down this way. I don't, don't know if I like that. I think I might pull these guys back. I'll hold the cav out there to keep him busy while I pull the infantry back. Alright, skirmishers. Looks like we're doing our thing. Nice! They took out that battery. Beautiful. That's the way to do it. Alright, the two cavalry brigades are going to sit tight. We're going to pull the infantry division back to a line down here. Alright, Burnside, pull your skirmishers in. Okay, we're pulling the cav back because I've just about got my infantry where I want them. Now let's let him come at me. Right into my killing zone. Well, assuming Alonzo Snow gets his brigade where I want them. Everybody else is where I want them. There we go. Alright. Hopefully he comes right into the center. But I feel like we've got a pretty strong defensive position. Let's get Kaim a little closer to the center of his division. Okay, end of the day. We'll get resupplied. We'll see what he does to redeploy. I don't know why my division commander's out here. But we'll... No, 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 no. Eh, I hate when that happens. Not a big deal, though. We'll just redeploy. Okay, looks like he's going to dig in right here, but all we got to do is sit tight. We hold the objectives. We hold the stronger defensive position. I have absolutely no reason to attack him. We'll just sit, sit here and do our thing. We've got 306 casualties. We've got more men than him. 
We've got every advantage on our side. Even more guns. We've taken out 40 of his 60 guns. I'm not moving. We'll just rack up those objective points, which are 8 to nothing for us right now. And watch and see what he does. Okay, so they're shifting their position again. Looks like they're going to be coming in right near my center. We've got some artillery that's shelling me, but we can return the favor. In fact, we're going to go ahead and uh, open up some counter battery fire here, see if we can neutralize those guns. And then let's send out some skirmishers from Burnside's division, as well as Brooks's division. All right, he's coming at me over here too, it looks like. Launching a full-scale attack right at my center. We've got skirmishers out there. I'm a little worried about what happens over here on the right where we've got just the cavalry. But otherwise, we're good. It just shifted into a minor victory category now. All right, let's see what happens here. Looks like Smith's 3rd Brigade is going to take the brunt of the attack over here, but we've got Albion Howe, who is a elite unit now. Very cool. Give them that, that elite status. Elite sharpshooters. They're going to tear that brigade up. All right, Morgan, get ready. In fact, I'm going to pull them back. All right, so far, so good. His morale's dropping. We've got 18 to 1 on objective points. Only objective he holds is this one right here. And you gotta drop. Green's Brigade surrendered. That was the one that charged in there. We lit them up so much that they surrendered. Now here comes Posey. And again, we're gonna have Howe with his elite sharpshooters firing into the flank of this brigade. Which is just gonna shatter them too. should be good on my right now. I think Posey's going to end up surrendering too. This is feeling a little bit like Franklin, historically, where the Confederates just had this disastrous charge that just gets shattered. They lose a bunch of generals. Just an ill-advised attack. Posey's losing a ton of men. About as one-sided a battle as I have seen in this game. It'll be interesting with all of the new changes to take on the role of the Confederates when this campaign's over. I'm hoping that'll be a much greater challenge. All we gotta do is sit tight. All right, we got another big group of artillery here. Let's uh, send our skirmishers to go quiet them if we can. He's loading up in the center now. Getting low on ammo already with those guys. 432 casualties, 1% to the 22% casualties I've inflicted on him. Just crazy. All 
Alright, let's call the 20th main skirmishers back. Dang. This is crazy. There goes that battery. Let's see what else he does to try and win this. Here's the situation. He's down to 26,000 men. He's lost 8,000 men to my 466. Now, this kind of thing did happen. I mean, the Union attack on Marie's Heights at Fredericksburg was about this one-sided. Uh, there was an attack, I think, at Vicksburg, where the Union lost several thousand men and the Confederates lost less than 100. But he's just, he's just done for. He really is. At some point, he's not going to be able to replace these losses. Here he comes. Is he going to attack? He's doing something. Yeah, he's coming in. This will be the final, final assault. He'll put this thing away for us. We've got a solid solid defensive position over here. We're going to drive them back quickly. And these guys are in their first combat. At least these three. I'm going to bring Gibson up. Get some flanking fire into these guys. sending one brigade at a time. This is nuts. At some point I'm tempted to assault, but why? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Griffith that broke. I think we're still set to counter battery fire. We need to switch to fire at will. It's only because his morale was so high that he has been fighting under these conditions for so long without retreating. Alright, looks like he's fallen back. He's finally figured out that this is just beyond stupid to keep fighting. 11,500 casualties later to just 900 for me. We'll see how this affects the Confederacy. I can't get a major victory. I'd have to inflict more than 41% casualties. Eh, it might be possible. All right, Shank, go after him. Send the whole third corps to pursue these guys. Not entirely sure we can at this point. Because I think he's going to retreat before that can happen. But we need to keep ours under 25% and get his over 41 to get a major victory. I just don't think that's possible. All right, there it is. 900 casualties. 13,500 for the Confederates. Oh my goodness, what a disaster. That was like their, um, their Franklin, their uh, being on the receiving end of Fredericksburg. Uh, we're going to wrap it up right there. We've dropped the enemy national morale another half a point, but uh, it's still going to be impossible to win without taking cities like New Orleans, Wilmington, probably Atlanta, maybe Chattanooga. We're going to have to drive his morale down that way. Okay. So it's June of 1863. Uh, the army of the Oconee has disintegrated. They'll reform somewhere else. But for now, uh, there's the situation. And it looks like we do have Meade's army starting to move. Where is he? He has boarded the flotilla. 
and he's making his way for North Carolina. That's some excellent news. That's what we want to see. We're going to need to see more of that. All right, we'll wrap it up right there. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll be back in a couple days with another episode. Thanks for watching.